what I'm going to do is read a modern version with a twist that reminds us of the Christmas story and links that in to the visit of the wise men. And I have two glamorous assistants here to help me. <laughs> I'm going to read it fairly slowly, so you'll have time to think about it, and there will be other reasons why I'm reading it fairly slowly. It's a familiar story at this time of year, but it has little to do with reindeers pulling sleighs and flakes of snow. <laughs> and now you've seen what's happening, the health warning is, do keep your eyes open to avoid getting hit. 2,000 years ago, a young woman named Mary heard a whisper from the angel Gabriel that she was to be the mother of God's son. <laughs> but how could this be? Having a baby out of wedlock would certainly make everyone snicker in the village. <laughs> By order of the government, Mary had to return with her husband Joseph to the town where he was born, Bethlehem, which was miles away. It was a long journey for someone heavily pregnant, but Joseph thought that having a break <laughs> would do them good. It was a tough journey, and Joseph desperately tried to find a place to stay, but club after club <laughs> after club let them down. No room, they all said. Eventually, they were offered the chance to stay in someone's guest room. No hotel on Quality Street for this couple. <laughs> and so it was there that the baby was born. He was named Jesus, which means saviour. That night, some shepherds heard angels singing songs in the sky. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth. They said to one another, come on, let's go to Bethlehem and see what has happened there. When they arrived, they found Joseph, Mary and the baby who was laid in a manger. It was no picnic staying there. Smelly and dirty, not a fit place for a king. They were filled with wonder, though. Could this be the one that the prophets had foretold? As it was getting late, after eight, in fact, <laughs> the shepherds returned to the hills. Meanwhile... And the meanwhile could mean a year or two later from what Rachel said earlier. Meanwhile, in a far country, some astrologers, they were real smarties, were busily scanning the galaxy when they saw a bright, when they saw a bright starburst Near, ooh. <laughs> near the Milky Way. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Was it Mars? No. It was a star shining with extraordinary, sorry, extraordinary brilliance. The Smarties <laughs> realized that the star signaled the birth of a new king. So they climbed on their caramels <laughs> and set off. They traveled hard 
along a very rocky road <laughs> and arrived at King Herod's palace in Jerusalem. Herod was really interested in what they told him. A prince has been born in the land, you say. He was a bit odd and tried to fudge the issue. by saying that he wanted to worship the baby who had been born as king. But Herod had a very short temper. His anger exploded, and he ordered the Smarties to report the baby's whereabouts. <laughs> Travelling on their caramels, <laughs> they came to Bethlehem. They found Joseph, Mary, and the child and offered their bounty. Anyone like bounties? <laughs> Frankincense, myrrh, and gold. More gold coming across. This next one's a bad one, I'll warn you. Then God warned them in a dream that Herod was up to his old Twix again. <laughs> Seeking the child's life. So they returned to their own country by another road. This wonderful tale isn't make-believe, but the true story of God's gift of love to the world. A gift even better than chocolate. The greatest gift of all, God's very own son, Jesus. Don't panic if you didn't get any chocolate. We've got lots left, so they'll be available at the end of the service. Have you got any last applause? <laughs> We've got the best gift. Apparently, it's not chocolate. Uh, that, um, but what was the best gift you got at Christmas this year? Does anyone have a really their favourite gift that they got this Christmas? Want to share what it was? Yes, Kate. An electric blanket to put me in my comfy chair. An electric blanket. An electric blanket for the comfy chair. Excellent. Any other really great gifts? Hand warmer. Hand warmer. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Your amp for your um, drumming, and can I just say excellent job on the drumming as well. So I was watching the QI Christmas special on TV just before Christmas, and apparently the best gifts that we receive are those that we do actually want, and surprises can actually be less well received, depending on how good you are and how well you know your partner, I guess, or the person you're buying for. Also, the cost value of the gift is not actually that important for the receiver. That's usually more important for the giver. When I was a child, my grandparents used to tape pound coins to the side of my gift if it was cheaper than my sister's or my cousin's to make sure we were all fairly treated. Now, I do appreciate their desire to be fair, and I don't want to speak ill of them now they're no longer with us, but I do seem to recall finding it more unfair when I didn't get coins on the side of my gift, um, which, of course, meant it was actually a more expensive gift, but I think that was lost on me and my sister, so there you go. Anyway, the QI special also revealed what the most popular plaything for a child is. Uh, anyone want to take a guess as to what that might be? What's the most popular plaything for children? Yes. Not Nintendo Switch, no. I heard a suggestion over here. A cardboard box, that was second, apparently. Uh, number one, I'll give you a clue, it's free. You can get them in Highbury, Cannon Hill. Sticks, yes. <laughs> apparently, the most popular plaything, now not a toy, plaything for a child is a stick. And now, if you've had children or spent time with children on a walk, anywhere rural, you will probably recognize this because you can't go on a walk with children without coming back with a stick or several, and they end up hanging around for months. Uh, not that I'm, you know, speaking from experience or anything there. Now, today's story is about somebody who came to visit, some people that came to visit Jesus and brought him gifts. And we've been thinking about baby Jesus as the greatest gift. And of course, we know a lot about these wise men. Or do we? 
I think probably if we've been around church for a while, we probably do know the difference between the Christmas card images that Rachel was referring to before and the reality of what happened. But let's play a little game of true and false and see how well we know these people that came to see Jesus. The first question, true or false, they were kings. False, yes. Okay, we often talk about them as being kings, but of course they weren't. Or at least they're not described as that in the Bible. They describe them as magi or wise men. Now, what that means, we're not 100% certain of, but they were probably educated, rich, powerful men who studied the stars. And in fact, it wasn't unheard of for magi from the east to travel to visit important people. There's apparently a comparable story a few years later of them visiting the Roman Emperor Nero, or a group of magi, not, less, not, not claiming the same ones. Okay, secondly, there were three of them. False, yes. Now, of course, there were three gifts, but it's likely it was a large group, of, including lots of servants, and probably, as well, to disappoint the, the image, they travelled on horse, not caramels or camels. <laughs> we know their names. No, we don't know their names. Now, church tradition has given them names, which apparently have been around for only since a few hundred years after... Jesus uh, exi- li- lived, but uh, no, we don't know their names, of course. They arrived 12 days after Jesus' birth? No, no. While, of course, we do celebrate it now, because it would be a bit weird to be celebrating it in two years, wouldn't it? Because which Christmas would you be celebrating them arriving from? <laughs> I don't know. But it was likely a while, and of course, we take that from the fact that when they spoke to Herod, whatever they told him made him assume that the baby could be as old as two. So they'd obviously been following this star for a while. They thought he was going to be in Jerusalem. Oh, true. Well, probably true, yes, yeah. They went to Herod in Jerusalem because they were looking for, uh, for this new person, this new king. And it was actually the scribes who knew that he was going to be, who identified he was going to be born in Bethlehem. Even though they didn't seem to be looking, but they knew where to look, but they didn't seem to be looking. They th- knew what they were looking for. They knew they were looking for a king. Is that true or false? True. Yeah, they came to Herod and they said they were looking for one born king of the Jews. How strange is that when you think about that sentence? Born king of the Jews. Nobody's usually born a king, are they? They're born to be king. They're born a prince or a princess to later become king or queen. But they're not born king of the Jews. But here they were looking for one who was born king of the Jews. The star was really a star. Yeah, well, we don't know that one, sorry. (laughs) Now, it could have been an actual star. Could have been an exploding star, a supernova, an alignment of planets in the sky, or a miraculous supernatural light placed there by God to guide the people. We don't know the answer to that one. But whatever it was, the wise men did recognize it was significant and did follow it. And... um, it was actually very common in the times that, to believe that a supernatural events would accompany the birth or death of great people and signs from heavens would accompany them. So, you know, it's not surprising that they did follow whatever it was that they saw. And finally, they brought gifts of significance. True. They brought, we know the gifts, because we already mentioned that already, gold, frankincense, myrrh. And of course we know, or they, these were to link to gold because he was a king, Frankincense, to symbol the holiness, and myrrh, a symbol of death, and to anoint him later in, well, when he died. So even the gifts had significance. So what can we learn from the wise men and the story that we've had chocolates thrown at us from today? Well, I've I've got three final points just to, to think that we can learn from these wise men. Firstly, they knew what they were looking for, and they came with purpose. When they found him, they worshipped him. Are we seeking the greatest gift with purpose in this new year? Are we here today to worship him? Is our life about seeking him and worshipping him? Secondly, Jesus came from an unexpected place, at least for most, Bethlehem, least among the rulers of Judah. The wise men headed to Jerusalem. They were looking, they thought they were looking in the right place for Jesus. They were certainly looking the right way for Jesus but they were looking in the wrong place as it turned out. Are we distracted by what the world would expect? Are we looking for Jesus in the expected places or maybe the unexpected places? The greatest gift is rarely what we expect. Jesus is certainly not what the world expects. And finally, they gave great gifts to Jesus of significance. What are we giving him in our life? 
at the minute? Does what we give reflect the significance that Jesus is the greatest gift and he's given us? QI got it wrong. The best gift is not what we ask for. It's not a stick. It's not chocolate or what we find in the middle of the pastor pass. Jesus is the greatest gift. So we're going to worship him today. The reading is from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he'd called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact place the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. 